Wow, I did not expect such a turnout from the non-payday video. Heck, the last videos to do this well was my Lisa videos. Well, at least it's given me something to do. Lisa the Joyful was released one year after the Painful, and follows directly after the end of the main game. You control Buddy for the entire DLC, and have access to no party members, except from Brando in Area 1. But what if we download a fan game that gives us a permanent addition to our party? Well, with quick help from Tyrant Gozi, today we find out, can you beat Lisa the Joyful with only buckets? Same rules as before, I can only use buckets for direct damage, but I will give a slight tweaking so I can actually finish this run. I can use Buddy's Bombs, Mend and Flash when I reach Area 2, but only when I feel it appropriate. The reason for this will become obvious later, but other than that little caveat, let's begin. Now, quick warning before I get to covering every detail of my adventure, the story has obviously been changed from the base version of Joyful, so I would recommend getting the game or watching a lore video if you want to get the story, but enough about that. We see a flashback of Brad telling Buddy that she needs to learn to defend herself by kidnapping some random guy, tying him up and handing her a knife, before we get some dialogue between two people that totally won't appear later. Then it cuts to where the painful left off, with the now mutant Brad watching over a sleeping Buddy, calling out for his sister. We waste no time in getting our hands on Buckets as he quickly makes our way into our party in a single turn. Buckets has received a bit of a rebalance compared to his painful counterpart more reminiscent of how he plays in Desolate Expanse. Rather than having all skills under one roof, he now has a Lucky Shot skill section, where all the coin shot skills go, you know, like, uh, Heads and Tails. Even more so as Bullet Tap has received a sort of side grade, no longer able to deal massive damage, but hits five times in one turn compared to the previous three. I don't know, maybe it's actually better than the base one, but it's more used for low defense targets. After a few turns of peppering Brad with bullets, Buzzo drops on by to quickly stop us from killing his victim. He basically tells Buddy that she's free and the world will tear her apart if she's not careful, before making off on his Armstrong steed. Buckets now officially joins and gives us some coal for our troubles. How nice of him. Now, finally, we're in the game. Bucket sadly has his pistols locked, but we can give him accessories and shawls we find around the area. I decide to look around for supplies, accidentally run off a cliff because I held down the run button, retry the intro, and make it back to where I left off. We then meet Bo... Okay, what the fuck is that last name? I'm pretty sure I've seen my friend's key smash that out when I've told a funny joke. Anyway, he tries sending his gun squad after us before Big Rando Babando can save the day. And by save the day, I mean stall Bolo long enough for a joint meeting to crush one of his guys and letting the trio run into a cave. Rando then talks about wanting the fighting to stop and asks Buddy to trust him before giving her a mask and walking out of the cave. We're then stopped by a gang after fighting a mutant before they realise who we are and we can get combat started. Remember back in the first video I mentioned wanting more multi-enemy fights? Well, Joyful contains a lot more, and this one is no exception. Even if most of the fights is the sibling Armstrong blocking whilst Bucket's bullet taps everyone, and honestly considering that it's the early game, enemies will usually target Buddy or Rando, meaning we don't have to worry about not having Buckets. We quickly take him down and head on our merry way, passing the list, the border between Eastern and Western Olaf that labels the most powerful people in the state. Is Olaf a state? Because I know it's named after Olaf, Colorado, but it's not a town. Never mind. So we reach the meeting place of Rando's friends when he passes out due to blood loss. He wakes up a couple days later to find out that his friend's tied up buddy and one of them tried to assault her, trying to crawl out before passing out again. He wakes up yet again and finds Buddy has killed two of those guys, whilst Bob ran away. She now has an idea. She's going to climb the list and become the most powerful person in Olaf. Okay, now we're back to our standard affair. One hub area with many different sections. I make my way to the village because there's two accessories we can get if we manage to get enough mags. The power coin and the wally leftovers. The problem is that they're mad expensive and I don't know where to get that much money. So instead we buy some jerky and make our way to the first warlord, Lardy Hernandez. The enemies on the way to him weren't too hard, but they did give us some good loot, which we will help us later when we fight both Vega and Mr. Beautiful. All of the fights have the same strategy at this point, block with Buddy and Rando, bullet tap with buckets, and after dealing with Gary, Rando tells us we can go back, which I obviously do, so we can rest up for the next battle. 
popularity was as you expected, a pushover considering he's the second or first warlord you're supposed to kill. He did take out Rando, but other than that it's the same as every other fight to this point. Just keep shooting and blocking. And before long, we cross the name off the list and take a nap for our troubles. I will also mention right here that I accidentally forgot to wear a mask on talking to Chester, so I had to kill him. On one hand, I can get perfume and Coca-Cola, but this means I can also get the power coin and the wall of leftovers. These will actually be really useful because of how the game engine works. Basically, to keep it brief, each block you move in the overworld equals one turn, meaning that if you have an item that regens HP or SP per turn, then you can just walk back and forth until you're healed up. Too bad I only remembered this in the second area. Next on the list was Mr. Beautiful, who is a pacifist. When we get into the area, Randall tells us not to kill the townies, and which neither Buddy or Buckets gives a shit about killing, so, you know, we get to murdering. I forgot to mention that killing Chester gave Buckets access to a very important skill, Smoke Shroud. This makes him virtually immune to every attack for two turns, the only things that can get him being a John Mune Strangle. Which, on the topic of, we have Baby, who wasn't all that challenging, but introduced the strangling mechanic into my miserable life. And any Lisa fangame experts, who do I blame for putting this into my life? Just ask. I heal up before fighting Mr. Beautiful, even if Rando didn't heal up beforehand because of how the, the resting mechanic works. Because fuck me, I guess. And honestly, most fights will go the same way, so all you need to know is fat anime Jesus got filled with more holes quicker than a train filled with toxic gas. Too soon? Anyway, after fighting him and wiping his name off the list, we are uh, fuck off. Uh, we get ambushed by Clit, a limp dick, and with barely any rest beforehand. And yeah, he nearly kicks our asses as expected. It doesn't help I didn't save, so I was kinda stressing to win. What makes it even worse is this fucker has the cool status, which makes my life infinitely harder. And you will see the struggle that cool has on my life later on. After that bastard leaves, giving us nothing in return, we rest yet again with Randall revealing his real name, Dustin or Dusty Armstrong. He tells us that he's Brad's adopted son in a last ditch attempt to get Buddy to listen. She obviously doesn't, and the next morning we make our way to Vega Van Dam. The area leading up to him wasn't that hard, although the pre-fight dialogue took me by surprise when Buddy promised to shave his head. After killing him, we regained a very important bit of kit, a picnic blanket. This will allow us to regen Bucket's health too, so we don't have to worry about his health. Well, in case it goes really low. But, in exchange for a blanket, we are down at Rando. Now I can use any of Buddy's skills, but only when I believe that we can't continue without them. And before we continue on, I fight the dinner boys. I also forgot to mention that Bullet Tornado actually got a buff, as it now targets every enemy instead of one. The backup dancers go down easily enough, and the band itself gets handled shortly thereafter. For our troubles, we're given a truckload of goodies, and we get Buddy's Men skill, which allows her to heal our wounds and cure some status effects, which is nice. Heading to area 2, we look around for some stuff and fight Ari, who kicks our asses. Second attempt goes better, and we get access to the Land of Hints, and the mask of my least favourite party member that I've actually used. I nap, get woken up by two guys, promptly kill them, and make my way to Cindy Gallows. It's at this point I remember the heal tech method, and went to find Louie, who proceeded to kill Buddy, and strangle the life out of Buckets. Afterwards, I stumble across the secret area leading to Dice, find some TNT, a piece of jerky, and the worshippers of Woodley to Diddly. But, where's his grave? Oh fuck. So yeah, I get my ass kicked by Mr. Jorgensen. Obviously considering his martial arts training I'm not surprised, but I will say my constant dying is making me a little annoyed. Here's hoping Harry gives me an easy time. Did... Did he crush my game? Alright then, we're starting my game and going back to Harry. Uh, his fight was alright, especially from a Joy Mutant. Just kind of stood there and took it. But it got me the big blade and access to the Joy Boys, and the Joy Mask. It may not provide anything, but goodness knows I need the moral support. So back to Louis I went, deciding that this was the point I was going to start using Buddy's skills. Now with Leech Bomb at my disposal, every encounter from this point on will be a cakewalk. Mostly because if you remember my fight with Satan, you know how broken the poison status can be. 
having Armstrong Louis, I deal with four archers that took down Cindy. And yeah, they went down quite easily with a couple of tornadoes and a leech bomb. Even if three of them took joy, there was no chance they would win. But Buck instead noticed the second warlord was still alive, so we gotta make sure he's dead too. Gallows had some form of bleeding, which makes him lose 20,000 HP a turn, so throwing a leech bomb into the mix, plus a lot of gun dancing, made an already dead man into a deader one. One down, two to go. Next up is Dice Mahone, and his gang is no slouch. Every single gang member has the cool status, which is probably a good thing that I decided to use the leech bomb, otherwise I wouldn't be able to out DPS their healing, at least for his cronies. Another good thing is that these guys drop mags, which is honestly refreshing since I really do need more healing supplies, or at least more padding to my healing supplies. After dealing with Blade Londa and seeing Clint across the gap, I made sure to restock, walk around some more to get my health and SP back up to snuff, and go and fight him. His second go around is way better than his first, mostly because I can nullify his healing and bullet tap has essentially replaced the standard shoot button as my SP has increased by so much, Power Coin now regenerates 15 SP per turn, which is really good. Gives us 50 mags for our troubles before we carry on to the big blue bastard himself. Now, I'm going to show you why it's very important that we got poison. You see that? 1500 HP. The problem with this is that I can't now damage his healing. I can't use heads and tails as a, you know, definitive source of DPS because it constantly misses, so I have to use the leech bomb. I mean, it's taking a bit to proc, so I need to use a fire bomb for a little bit, but it gets down, which uses up my only perfume, but we did get poison at work, and now we can finally bring down dice, getting a scarf for our troubles. Now, we only have Big L himself, but we have a sticky situation with Rando and some barbed fire. Problem, Bolo put him up there to put Buddy in a compromising position. I really don't like how this scene plays out in the original, but luckily we have our boy to help Buddy out, giving Bolo a prescription of the pills that cure pedophilia. Bolo is easy, nothing more than that, mostly because of smoke shroud and bullet tap. Like, now that we have 15 SP regening every turn, I barely have to use any other skills. But after Bolo goes down, Buddy thanks Buckets and begins to feel more comfortable around him, which is nice. Sadly, she drops Rando and caves a skull in for betraying her, which is a shame, but good things are always counteracted with bad things. Speaking of which, time to fight the biggest of Lincolns. His gang wasn't all that bad, but by the end we fight the big cherry, who's still alive. Either that proves pain mode isn't canon in this continuity, or he just didn't die. Enough about that. We kick his ass and get a well-timed poncho upgrade before we fight the man himself. Lincoln's fight goes about as well as you expect considering most of the fights up to this point have been about the same, but he at least puts up a good fight, that's all I can say. So, with Lincoln down, now it's time for cleanup. I head back to the village to stock up on items before making it to the Whitley Cave to kill Austin. As expected from a secret boss and God himself, he dealt quite a beating as expected, but luckily he didn't down us. Granted, unlike the last secret boss, I had infinite access to poison, so he went down way easier. After defeating him, we do indeed get rewarded with the Dancing Demon, and 50 mags. It applies the party status effect, but I don't know what that does. We do the obvious yet again, before we finally get onto the end of the game. We have to fight Sweetheart until we can leave. But the problem is that she always kills Buckets, and I have no perfume, so I can't revive him. I try multiple times to stop it, but it always happens. It took me several attempts to realise that it was scripted, and it also, it was your fault, you bastard! Still, we technically can't continue, but hey, we can still use smoke bombs, because I do remember Buckets reviving himself after a few turns when I originally played this. Which does in fact happen after Buddy goes into a joint-dust catatonic state, with Buckets having to deal with Yaddo's throne, now resembling Dusty. Afterwards, she wakes up in a field of blood and flowers, walking along until she finds Brad. Now, normally you fight this dream version of Brad, who shows Buddy how much she means to him, but Brad realises that Buddy's mind is occupied on someone else. Buckets. She doesn't understand why he sticks around with her, even after everything she's done. But she appreciates him, cheers him on, and thanks him for sticking by her side. It's a very sweet moment that shows Buddy finally has a friend. 
the vision fades and Yato is left without his trumpet or his mutant throne, running away before Buddy thanks Buckets, taking the vaccine and chasing after him. Once cornered, he does the usual spiel of saying he's a god and that she should be thankful before a machete flies through the air and domes him in the face. Buzzo is alive and, well, not exactly well, that's what you get for strangling Buckets. He tells Buddy that her pain was caused by Buzzo trying to blame Lisa's death on Brad, that he realised how much of a grip she had on his life and that he shouldn't have done it, before breaking down and mutating into, well, a mutant. Bernie is about what you expect, just another damage sponge, but he at least knows to decapitate himself rather than do it on buckets this time. Afterwards, Buddy begins to suffer joy hallucinations of Brad and Randall. We take the vaccine, finishing the game, and proving that no, you can't be Lisa the Joyful with only buckets. But a fan game with buckets added, you technically can. Honestly, this fan game is a lot of fun, but I wouldn't recommend it if you haven't played the original. You miss out on a lot of the story and lore. But with Joyful completed, we can't continue this little series of mine. I mean, it's not like there's any more fan games we can cover, and no, I'm not playing Desolate Expanse. Still, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give me a like and a little comment, maybe even a suggestion of the next challenge run. Who knows? But I'm Buck Taylor, and thank you for watching.